process of upgrading your CPU may seem like a daunting task, but it's actually one of the easiest components that you can swap out on your PC. The only things you will need is a non-conductive surface to work on, like a wooden table, something to keep your screws in, that way you can easily find them when you need them. You will also need a screwdriver, thermal compound, and an anti-static wrist strap to avoid damaging any of your PC components. I have built 17 computers so far, and I've never used a static wrist strap. Not saying that you shouldn't, but I've never encountered any issues with that one. So first things first, make sure the CPU that you're upgrading to is compatible with your motherboard before you proceed. You can check on your motherboard's manufacturer website to see what CPUs are compatible with your motherboard or if you will need to update the BIOS for it to work. So after you verify it, go ahead and power off your computer and disconnect all the cables from it. Remove the side panel and lay it down on its side. Now depending on the CPU cooler that you have on your computer, the removal process will be a little different. I am using the Deepcool AS500 Plus air cooler that is pretty simple to remove as you can see in this clip. It requires me to remove both fans to get access to the two screws that are holding it down. Most CPU coolers are fairly easy to remove, but as always, refer to your cooler's installation guide. And for those of you with the more complicated ones, I recommend watching an installation video on your specific CPU cooler. Make sure to disconnect the CPU fan header cable from your motherboard. Your cooler may have two fans, so make sure to disconnect both. The CPU fan header is usually located on the top right side of your motherboard, and it will have a small label near it. So once you removed all the screws or undid all the latches, gently lift up the cooler. Some of you may encounter a cooler that seems to be stuck, so after checking that you didn't miss a screw or a latch, gently wiggle it back and forth while pulling up. This seems to do the trick on most of them. Once you have successfully removed the cooler, there are a few options to wipe down the old thermal paste that is left on your cooler and CPU. You can either use a cotton ball and damp it with rubbing alcohol, or buy one of those thermal paste removers. I personally use lens wipes, the ones that come pre-soaked since I got a ton of those laying around. So gently wipe away all the thermal paste on your CPU and also on the bottom of your CPU cooler. So once you got rid of all the thermal paste, you can then remove the CPU from the socket by lifting this little retention arm here. You slightly push it out and then lift it up all the way to unlock it. With the retention arm release, you can now lift up the CPU. Make sure to grab it from the sides and gently remove it. Avoid touching the gold paints at the bottom. These tend to be quite delicate and can be damaged quite easily. So now go ahead and store it in a safe spot. Now with the old CPU out, let's get the new CPU out of the packaging. If you inspect the corners of the CPU, you will notice a small gold triangle on one of them. If it's hard for you to see it, there's a slightly bigger one on the back side of the CPU. The socket also has a small triangle on the corner that helps you match the orientation that it should go. So make sure to align these and then gently set the CPU down on the socket. You can give it a nice soft wiggle to make sure it is seated properly. Then you can lower the retention arm and push it into the locking position. If you will be reusing your cooler, then you will need to apply some new thermal paste onto your CPU. But if you have a new CPU cooler that comes with some pre-applied thermal paste, then you don't need to add any thermal paste to your CPU. Make sure to only apply a small amount since the purpose of the thermal compound is to ensure a good contact between your CPU and the heatsink. There are various styles of applying the thermal compound. The most common method is the dot or P method where you only place a small amount of thermal compound at the center of your CPU and this will spread when the heatsink is seated on the CPU. My personal favorite is the X method where I make an X with a compound on my CPU. To get more confidence, make sure to run a test sample on a piece of paper before applying it to your CPU just to get a feel of the pressure needed for the paste to come out. This way you don't accidentally apply too much, causing the compound to spill over the sides when the cooler is installed, and this is a mess to clean up. Now all that is left is to install your CPU cooler. Gently lower your cooler onto your CPU and follow your specific cooler's installation guide. I slowly tighten down the screws going back and forth between both of them until they were both fully tightened to ensure a good seal. I then went on to clip on the fans onto the heatsink, and I also reconnected the CPU fan header cables to the motherboard. Okay, so now you can plug your cables back onto your computer and power it on. Upon powering your PC, it should automatically recognize your new CPU and boot up into BIOS. If it doesn't, press the delete or F2 key to enter into the BIOS, or it will tell you new CPU, recognize, press F1 to enter BIOS. So go ahead and do that. So once the BIOS loads, you will see your new CPU somewhere in your screen. You can then go ahead and click on exit. You can either choose to load optimized system defaults, or you can select on save and exit, if you made any changes. Once you click on OK on either one of them, 
it will boot you into Windows. Alright, so that concludes today's video. Thank you all for watching. If you have any questions, let me know and I will get back to you as soon as possible. And feel free to drop a like if you found this video helpful and subscribe for more tech related videos and I will talk to you on the next one.